School of the Prophets will uh, begin again February the 26th. I think that is, Kim, if you can check that and make sure I'm right. I'm not the best in dates. Sometimes I don't know what date it is, but I do know that that's my date on the front row. <laughs> uh, that, that's that. been my date for years, and I'm leaving <laughs> this world with that date. Uh, that's one day that I, 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 can't, I can't forgive. I'm not good with other days. Uh, let me just kind of clear up something else for you. You see things up here like K, KB Ministries. Some of you are like, what is that? Well, let me tell you, I'll tell you real quick. The Kingdom Builders Ministries International is an apostolic oversight that we have from the South for other ministries. Okay? Church for Grace is a church that God called us to found that is under that umbrella. Are you okay with that? And, uh, you know, I, I was blessed by God and privileged by God to be the founder of KBMI. Okay, and, and, and we get to oversee and help a lot of ministries develop, give them platform, give them voice, give them encouragement, give them the ability to be who they are, uh, give them the ability to become everything that God wants them to be. How many know that we're in a season of we need connect, connections and connectability? See, if you can't connect, you can't be accountable. If you can't be accountable, you can't reach potential. Are you hearing me? See, everybody wants to have a... See, the great thing about a wonderful marriage is this. My wife don't always agree with me. That keeps me in line. If she always agree with me, I'd get crazy. And at some juncture, I would think that I had all going on. You know what I'm saying? And so in ministry, sometimes we need to have a relationship with somebody that don't always agree. Amen. Are you hearing me? And, and, and we have to have that ability to relate and connect so that we can develop the best that's on the inside of us. All right? So I thought I would clear that up for you so that you guys, you see that on the screen and, and, and uh, sometimes it's confusing. What does that mean? Okay? All right. If you got your Bibles... Turn with me for a few minutes. I want, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you some scriptures. I'm going to read them. Uh, we'll be in Matthew chapter 16. We'll be in Matthew chapter 18. And we'll be in Romans chapter 12. Everybody okay? Yes. Touch somebody next to you and say, I'm here to change my mind. I'm here to change my mind. Whether I want to or not. <laughs> because God knows I know everything. And I don't need to change anything. Uh, I threw that in there because I know that's how we really are. All right. So now we're going to stay on this series of breaking strongholds. And uh, the indication in the church today when we talk about bringing down or breaking strongholds is that we sometimes think to talk about we think our mind goes to deliverance ministries and to demonic possessions and all those type things. But really... The strongholds that we have in our lives are not always created by demonic influence. Sometimes they're create, created by religious influence. Y'all do know that religiosity is a spirit. Uh, Jesus went into the church and overturned the religious tables. Because it had become a mindset that created a stronghold that was destroying what the house really was. All right? Okay, now let me give you a, a, couple, a definition for mindset. Psychologists define it as an attitude, as something that is a learned tendency to evaluate things in a certain way. In other words, a mindset is something that you have that allows you to determine the outcome of something based on what you know. You know, the limitation of what God can do for you is really based on the mindset that you have that what you think he can do. Do you do know that God cannot do anything that you don't believe he can do? I didn't say he doesn't have the ability, but he's limited by what's in your mind. A lot of us came up in church believing certain things about God. Well, I know God can heal, but really that but is an indication that there's a mindset. If he created the body, he can reap. Can I tell you, when I pray for healing for somebody, I don't want God to heal you in that he heals something that you have. I want God to make it new. See, if I have a bad heart, I don't want a healed heart. I want a new one. 
Because a healed one has scars. And scars have a tendency to break down. But you can only get what you ask for. And so if you ask for healing, you're just going to get scar tissue over a problem you had. But if you ask, am I making any sense? But our mindset is that we have seen God do things, so we ask based on what we have seen, not based on what he can do. All right. All right. So it's, it's a learned tendency. And we learn it by what we have seen, and we learn it by what we have been taught. Can I, I want to submit this to you, and everybody watching Facebook and all this Periscope and all this other stuff, is I'm going to probably get a lot of people write me. I'm okay with it. Write me, write me, write me. If I don't want to answer, I won't. Okay? I, I don't get into theological arguments. But I can tell you that a lot of our mindsets came from erroneous teaching from right here. From right here. We're not teaching individuals that you should renew your mind on a daily basis. What we're teaching them is that when you get saved, you become a new creation, so you get a new mind. No, you don't. What you get regenerated is the spirit that's on the inside of you that quickens your flesh, but you still have the same mind. Let me just make, let me ask you the question. If when you got saved... Shortly after that, because you know that the euphoria of salvation has a time span. Oh, y'all looking at me funny. You know, when you got saved, you're like, hallelujah, run around the church, jump up and down, and come Friday of the next week. All that jump up and down, jumped up and went. (laughs) And all of a sudden, you're faced with the reality of life. And all of a sudden, in your mind, is the call to go back to what you did before you got saved. Why is that the case if your mind was made new when you were saved? Why did Paul say that I have to renew my mind on a daily basis? Because what Paul was saying was this, I used to kill all of y'all. And now that I know you, I know why I killed you. So every day I have to renew my mind that is my call so that I can stay focused on what my destiny and my purposes are. Because every day I go back to what I used to be because my old mind is still here. I have a new spirit and a renewed, a renewed uh, uh, being, but my mind is still the same. And so God can renew my spirit, but he wants me to renew my mind. Why does he want you to renew your mind? Because you have mindsets that you need to deal with. Can he do it? Yes. But is he going to do it? No. Why? Because if he does it for you, you don't become... See, God's not going to do everything that you want because then you just become a suckling. Have you ever seen a dog when he wings the pups? When she wings the pups, she's like, yeah, that's it. I've had enough. I'll get up and leave y'all. Because if I lay here, we're all going to die. Because you have become so accustomed to me doing for you that you'll kill me, and then you won't be old enough to survive by yourself. See, God wants us to understand that he is everything and all things, but there are some things that you got to do. The Bible says that that my salvation is a continual work in process. How do I know that? Because I move from level to level to level. Why am I moving to level if I'm not still working it out? I'm going to heaven. That's a finished product. But my walk every day is a continual work every day because my mind has not been completely renewed. And so my mind keeps taking me back to the old person I used to be, even though I'm not that person. But what I have today is I have the Holy Spirit on the inside of me helping me renew my mind. Why is that? Because Jesus said it's imperative that I go away. Because if I I go away, I can do something to renew your spirit, but I need to renew the spirit that's on the inside of you so that it can keep telling your mind who I am. 
And the Holy Spirit keeps telling my mind who Jesus is. That's what strengthens me and encourages me to keep going. Yes. Amen. Uh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I ain't even started yet. <laughs> also, a mindset is a fixed, check this word out, a fixed mental attitude or a disposition that predetermines a person's response. So a mindset is something that you already have decided how you're going to react before it ever gets placed in front of you. That's the reason that we're walking in and living in, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, a church that is subpar, not as powerful as it's supposed to be, because we don't want to deal with the mindsets that are sitting in the chairs and are on this platform that tell us we have already predetermined how we're going to react to a situation rather than walk in victory because we already have it, so we might have to succumb to some things. I mean, I, I looked in not too long ago. Y'all read the news. Y'all know the news by now that uh, there are some states who already have approved abortion up to the time of birth. Where is the church? Where is the outcry? It's because we have adopted a mindset that if we raise up, they might come against us. We have developed a mindset that we have a predetermined idea of how we will always react. And so the enemy already knows that we're already in a offensive, we're already in a defensive mode, not an offensive mode. And so every time we look at these things and we get surprised by them, you shouldn't be surprised because we don't ever renew our minds. And so we begin to accept subpar. Oh, it got quiet in here. Let me bring it to your level. The reason you're going through hell in your life is you have learned to expect it. You have learned to anticipate it. In fact, you have already decided how you will react when it shows up. I'm a, and here comes a problem. I'm going to go ahead and pray about this real quick. Really? Yeah. What are you going to pray for? Well, I'm going to pray that God moves out of the way. Hold on a second. My Bible says that everything that comes into my life, if I'm a believer, is sent by or used by. How am I praying for God to remove something that he sent or is going to use? Yeah. But it's the mindset that we have been taught that that's how we deal with problems. No, no, no. How you deal with problems is stand flat-footed on, on the faith that you have, on the word that has been written. Look it straight in the face and say, bring the best you got. Come on now. Because I know on the other side of this thing is promotion. Because God brings things and allows things to strengthen my mind. Come on. So that when it comes back again, it can't affect me. Because now I go, oh yeah, I recognize you. You was over here last year. And you know that when you talk to the devil like that, he goes, well, let me go check somebody else out. Can I, uh, let, me, let me keep going. I got to go here. All right, y'all ready? Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Let me stop right there to break a mindset that you have. We bind demons and loose demons. That's the concept or the precept that we have in that. But can I tell you that I am trying, can I tell you this? Y'all heard me say it before. I'm not trying to be a Christian. I'm just trying to be Christ-like. Are you hearing me? The, because the terminology we use for Christian today isn't really Christ-like. Because we use Christian whenever, you know, when you want to get a job and you find out the person that's interviewing you is a Christian, you can become a Christian real quick. You quote scripture you don't even live by. Because it, being a Christian is sometimes convenient. But being Christ-like is never convenient. Because it requires sacrifice. Okay? But what it's talking about in Matthew is not talking about demons. Hey, did you ever see Jesus bind a demon? Oh, no, he don't ever bind them. Because if you bind things, they can eventually work themselves loose. Y'all watch TV. So what Jesus did with demons is cast them out. 
See, when you bind things, you kind of play with them. So I want to break a mindset and let you understand that scripture is not talking about binding demons. Because if I'm Christ-like, I'm not binding something that I have authority over. We bind that demon. Really? No, we speak to that demon. And we tell him, in the name of Jesus, be removed. Okay. Oh, well, y'all might not like this, but my responsibility is to find a way for you to enjoy Jesus. I came to give you a life more abundant life. How come you ain't got it? Because you have mindsets that limits a promise that he already made. And Jesus being God, Amen. right, yes. can never make a promise that he can't keep. As soon as he speaks it, it can never stop. Amen. So if I come to give you life, more abundant life, how come you don't have it? I submit to you, you don't have it because your mindset tells you you can't get it. Amen. That's right. I want to be rich. You ain't going to get rich by not giving I just thought I'd drop that in there because your mindset is this. I need that money so that I can pay my rent. Really? Who is the supplier of your needs? God. That money? Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That money? No, but your mindset is I better be careful. And I do, and I'm not saying be foolish. But what I am saying is this. God will require you to do some crazy stuff. Because he's looking for crazy faith. He ain't looking for secure faith because that's not faith at all. Faith is when you step out of the boat not knowing if you can walk on the water or not. Okay, that's the faith. So, you know, a lot you don't have the life that God wants you to have because you have a mindset that tells you you don't know it, but it tells you that you can't. I'm supposed to be a lender, not a borrower. How come you can't even pay the notes you borrow? If you're supposed to be a lender and you can't even pay back the people you owe. Why? Well, well... I don't know. How about the scripture, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus? How about that? But your mindset says, okay, those things are good for some things. But when it comes to the money and me paying my bill, well, that's why God gave me the job. Really? God really gave you the job so you could give to the kingdom, not so that you could pay your bills. Oh, see, it's hard, isn't it? Those are hard things. And that's why you still can't pay nobody. Because money got you. Faith don't have you. Because of your mindset. It's become a stronghold to you. You can't serve, but what the Bible say? You can't serve God and... Oh, can I tell you, most of some of y'all are wearing some, driving some worn out old hoopties. When God's got a brand new car in your life, but so but because you have a poverty mindset, God can't do anything outside of what you have already predetermined that you're going to react to. Are you hearing me? Some of y'all have been so disappointed by things in life that you have decided to predetermine yourself that you're going to just be disappointed. And so everything that comes your way disappoints you. Even though you're wanting something bigger than what you have, you really don't believe that you deserve to have it. Well, you know, I know the reason I'm driving this old messed up old car. Well, you know, you don't know my past. Really? God don't even know what past you had if he forgave you. You're the only one who keeps bringing it up. Oh, Okay. All right, let's go to let's go to Matthew eighteen eighteen. Y'all okay? Yes, sir. All right, I told you you have to change your mind. Matthew eighteen eighteen. Truly, I tell you, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose will be loose in heaven. Almost the same thing. Now let's go to Romans twelve and two. You ready? Here we go. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, because this world has a mindset. And the mindset of the world is there is a God, but he's out there somewhere in the cosmos, and he'll show up if I need him to show up. Okay? Don't be conformed to the pattern or the mindsets of this world. Well, that's just how it is. Can I tell you, that is not how it is. It is not how it is. You, you want something different in this world? Can I tell you? How many people are fed up with the news you see? 
Y'all tired of it? Y'all tired? How many people tired? I'm tired of the random killings. I'm tired of the political mess. I'm tired of the corruption. I'm tired of, uh, of abortions. and I'm tired of all these. Okay, let me give you something. If my people who are called by my name, there is a condition for the healing of your land. And your mindset is that God is just going to do it. But it doesn't say that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. In other words, y'all got way too much pride. Y'all are way too afraid to mess up that hairdo and them shoes and them clothes. Y'all are way too afraid to mess up that Maybelline face you got. Y'all are way too proud to tarry an extra hour. Y'all are way too proud to do without lunch and stay a little late. Y'all... If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, move all of their mindsets and their strongholds, renew their mind in who they know that I am, and seek my face, then I will hear their cry, and I will what? Heal the land. You want the land to be healed? Stop waiting for God to do it. He's waiting on you. Why? Can he heal the land? Absolutely. But his word says, if you will, I will. Why? I need to see you move because I already showed you my move 2,000 years ago. I came out of heaven and left the throne. I left paradise so that I could show you who I am. Now I've already shown you me. I want to see you. I want to see the reality of what your mind says about me. Because your action is an indication of how you think about me. <laughs> I told you this was going to be interesting. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? How can I be transformed from what? Be, from being controlled by what the world is doing and dictating. I have to renew my mind. In order to renew my mind, I have to deal with my mindsets, my predetermined conclusions that I have already drawn about things that have not even been presented to me yet. So in other words, I already know how I'm going. If God breaks out in prophecy, I already know I don't believe in it. If God tells me something through somebody that nobody else knows of me and God, that can't be God. That is a mindset, and you're never going to get God to speak to you like that because you have already predetermined how you're going to react. Can I tell you, there are facets of the character of God that you have never seen, never imagined, never been exposed to, that you're never going to see. When you get to heaven, you're going to be so surprised by the reality of who he is because you have restricted him in your life by the mindset that you have already set up that is predetermined about how you, how you think about him and how you're going to react. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Most of our predetermined ideas came from church. Mm -hmm. Because we all came from backgrounds that said God can do and God can do and he used to do. Y'all y'all know, how many of y'all came from Baptist background? Thank God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How many of y'all came from Pentecostal backgrounds? How many of y'all came from Catholic backgrounds? Uh, see, there's a lot of... Uh, every time a hand's raised, I see a mindset. I see a mindset. Because guess what? And I'm not going to down anything or anybody because I believe that everybody who confesses with their mouth and believes with their heart is going to be in heaven. I don't care if you use a rosary. That don't bother me enough. Are, are you hearing me? If you need a rosary to break, God bless you. Keep on praying. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I'm going to get a lot of inboxes for that, but I'm okay with that. I don't care. Because the Bible says that if you believe in your if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, there's no condition. Are, are you okay? Okay? Because when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you make him the Lord of your life. A rosary can't take God's place. It can't knock him out. Oh, yeah. see, see, we have mindsets that even some of us that didn't come from that background has a mindset that says, how can Catholics go to heaven? How can they? How can they? 
But that's a mindset that's limiting what God can actually do for somebody in your eyes. And so it limits your ability to understand the, the, the capacity that God has with grace and mercy because you have a predetermined mindset of what is and is not and what God can do and cannot do. Uh, are you okay? I'm just trying to teach you how to live an abundant life. You can't get there with preconceived ideas. Some of y'all in this building need God to do a miracle in your life. There are people who are going to die in situations because somebody imposed a mindset yeah. that caused them to have a predetermined idea God can't do. God can't do it. Can I tell you, God always shows up when the doctor says it's over. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Because my God is a miracle worker. Yeah. Yeah. And what is a miracle? When there ain't no hope. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It ain't God that shows up in the doctor's office when you show up the first time. Yeah. It's God that shows up when they say, well, you got three days. And God's like, yeah, really? I'm the one who wrote that expiration date. Yeah. And so guess what? I can reverse the curse. I can make what seems to be a loss be a gain. Yes. I can I can take what seems to be a curse to be a blessing. Yes. That's what I can do. But as long as you have a stronghold in your mind that limits God's ability, he cannot do outside of what you believe he can do. If he did it, you wouldn't see it. See, a lot of y'all have had some miracles in your life that you accredited to doctors because you didn't know that God was a miracle worker. I know miracle worker, oh, that, that's when I just am at the end of my rope. You know, when I'm laying prostrate on the bed, Lord, I can't make it. That's the one you're looking for. I'm looking for the one that says uh, that he is all sufficient with all of my needs. That when I can't see it, he's still working. When I can't feel it, he's still doing it. But I've got to rearrange my mindsets in order to remove any preconceived conclusion so that I can see the reality of what God can really do. Are you okay? Oh, good. I'm glad you are because this is just the introduction. <laughs> but we're going to stop right here. Okay, let's read that again. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Check this out. And then the Holy Spirit writes a word. Writes a word. Then. 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 You will be able to test and approve what God's will is. But with an old mindset, you cannot find the will of God for your life. I didn't say it. Let me read it. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the... Re See, you, your spirit is made new, but your transformation comes by renewing. Uh, are you hearing me? Oh, I got saved. Yes, I did. I'm going to heaven. Yes, I am. I don't care if I do like, like Elder Pickett said. You know, I cussed. That does not change my destination because the blood's been applied to me and the Spirit's going to cause me to repent for what I did. My salvation is here written in concrete. Can I tell you something? Anybody ever studied criminology? Do you know that the worst thing, the hardest thing to try to cover up is a blood stain? Because there is a light that will always reveal it. So once the blood has been applied, there ain't no whiteout. That's right. Mm -hmm. If there was whiteout, we but see a lot of us think there is whiteout because we have a mindset that said God's not able to keep me until the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Paul said, that's why I renew my mind. Because that by renewing my mind, I know that he's able to keep the promises that he made me. Although, although I'm going to face persecution, although I'm going to face death, I do know that he will still remain faithful to me and fulfill everything that he has promised me in my life. But I can only get it if I bring down the strongholds in my mind and renew my mind every day. I, that's how I see the will of God. A lot of us are going to other people. So what's, what does God want for my life? I don't know. I can't tell you. Why? Because you got a block up there. What, what's the block? You asking me what's God's will for your life? You tell you, but your mindset is I can't tell you. Because you don't believe that God can speak to me about you. And so you have a blockage that's not going to allow you to understand the will when God can speak to me right in front of you and confirm to you if he wants to and clear your mind up. Amen. But can I tell you, we can preach all kinds of things from the pulpit, but it's never going to cause you to renew your mind just because of a word you hear. You have to understand that it's your own responsibility. Your capacity to understand God is your responsibility. How do I know that? Because I talk to people all the time and I preach to people all the time. And some people get it and some people don't get it. How come some people do and some people don't? Because the people who get it are willing to bring down the strongholds and renew their mind and understand that God has a greater capacity. The ones who walk out that don't get it are the ones who couldn't renew their mind because they didn't think it was necessary. Or somewhere some preacher told him, when you got made new, you were a new creation. All these thoughts you have now are old, new thoughts. No, they're not. They're still old thoughts. You do know that in this new creation, it's still the old you lurking around. How do I know that? Because the Bible says, as long as I'm in the flesh, I'm subject to the flesh. So the old man is still hanging around all the time. Always... Y'all need to give y'all need to give one Miss Kim out to church and ask her for a CD I did on teaching called Voices. <laughs> Listen to the CD that I, that I did on teaching called Voices because there are voices vying for your attention. Yes. Yeah. There are voices vying for your attention. Yeah. And guess what? Your body goes the place where the voice that speaks the loudest yeah. tells you to go. That's, right. That's the reason you saved and find yourself in places you shouldn't be at. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're listening to the wrong voice. Yeah. That's right. Uh oh. Okay. And God said, Adam, how come you're hiding, Adam? Adam said, well, I heard you coming, and we necked And God didn't say, really? I don't think so. God said, who told you? Somebody else is talking to you. Because I told you what not to do. But somebody told you that it would be okay to do it. So I'm not here to criticize your doing, but I'm here to reveal another voice that's in the garden. God said, this is easy, Adam. You've got to leave the garden. Okay, you can't stay here anymore because you were disobedient. But I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. Why? Because down the road, centuries from now, I want everybody to understand that there is a voice that is not my voice. And that's why you have to renew your mind. If you don't, you will listen to the wrong voice. And can, I, can I tell you this? The devil's never going to tell you to do a bad thing. Oh, y'all looking at me strange. He will tell you to do a good thing. But he will never tell you to do a God thing. You do know that every good is not God. Because good is based on perception of what's in your mind. David looked out the window. He told the prophet, the wars are over. We are victorious. It's really terrible that I'm living in this big mansion. And my God is living out there in the tent. So I'm going to build him a tent. Good idea. 
The prophet goes to pray and God says, go tell David that that is not what I told him to do. It's a good idea, but it's not a God idea. And you can do a good thing and still miss God. How do I know that? Because if you don't renew your mind, the enemy will confuse you with good and God. Uh, can I tell you this? I have talked to ministers before that tell me, I, I don't understand what's going on. My wife is leaving me. Really? Yeah, she says, I am gone preaching way too much. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me about this. Well, I'm gone preaching way too much. And so I, I can't understand why God would allow this to happen when I'm doing what he wants me to do. And my question is, hang tight. Is that a good thing? Sure. But is that a God thing? It sounds good that you're going everywhere preaching. But did God tell you to go? Because if not, it was a good thing, but not a God thing. And a good thing has an author, and that's the devil. Oh, how does he author good? Because y'all don't know the difference between good and God because your mind's all messed up. Yeah. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, I got quiet. Let me read to you again, and then we're going to close. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not talking to lost people here, talking to Christ followers. Then you will be able to test and approve what's God's will. Now check this out. He's good. He's pleasing. And is perfect. So God has a good will. That's what he allows you to do sometimes because you want to do. Yeah, yeah, can, you, can, can, can I just break that down for just one second? If you renew your mind, you'll be able to know the difference between good, pleasing, and perfect. And that way it says, what is the perfect will of God for me? I don't know. If you would renew your mind and bring down the strongholds that are blocking your ability to comprehend him for who he really is, you would know the perfect will. Now, there is a good will that God will allow you to do just because you're so hard-headed. Y'all know how that is. Some of y'all have been married twice, three times. Yeah, okay. God said, hey, look, that's not the perfect one. You got to wait. I don't want to wait. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Only to wake up, you go, I don't know what happened. I do. I do. You had a stronghold in your mind that told you that you were getting older and you didn't want to wait no more. I had a, I had a relationship and I really miss a relationship. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I love you. But we're going to be back here again. How many of you want God's good will or his perfect will? I want his perfect will. Because guess what? The good will generally means that it's something I have got to learn. The perfect will means I ain't got to go this way again. But I have to renew my mind in order to decide and understand what is that perfect will. Uh, are you okay? Uh, we're going to close with that because, you know, I, I, I'm really tired of seeing these strung along, hang along, powerless people who call themselves Christ followers. And, you know, every time something comes up, they get led down the road and they're arguing about somebody's anointing over somebody else's anointing. And, you know, and, and you, you can I, did y'all do y'all know this? That God's anointing is available to every single one of you. That's right. Not one person has, I don't have a monopoly on the anointing. <laughs> Benny Hinn doesn't have a monopoly on the anointing. You have the access to the same anointing. I didn't say gifting. I said anointing. You have access to the same anointing. Why don't you have it? It's because you limit your access. Why? Because you have a stronghold that is a mindset 
on the inside of you that somehow try, convinces you that you are not able or you are not worthy or it can't be for you or somebody pronounced something negative over you or you have a bad past or you had a bad this or you had a bad that. God does not care about your bad. All right. I don't know about you, but the Bible, I said that my God, that I read says that my God is no respecter of persons. Right. He calls his blessings to follow what? The just. That, well, if he can bless the unjust like he can bless the just, then how come as a justified individual, I don't have the same right to, to the anointing of God that Benny Hinn or somebody else has? He doesn't have... Oh, 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 oh y'all got quiet. But it's in my mind. Paul said, I have to renew my mind in order for my mind to convince my body that every step I am taking is in his perfect will. Because when I'm shipwrecked and it looks like I'm going to drown, if I don't have a renewed mind, I might change my direction. When I put my hand in the fire and a snake that is poisonous bites me, if I don't have a renewed mind, I don't understand that God put the snake in there anyway. It wasn't for me, but it was for everybody who was watching. If I don't have a renewed mind, I'm probably going to die right here in front of them. But if I renew my mind, even the snake is in its perfect will. Come on. But I have to keep a renewed mind so that I can see the perfect will. Otherwise, I become discouraged and go back to what I used to be. Because I want to do what God wants me to do. And every time I think I fall short, it makes me step backwards. And so now i got to keep walking further just to get to where I was before. But in reality, you really don't have to. What you have to do is say to your mind, mind, I'm going to pull down that mindset that says that I have to go five steps and back up four. I, can I, God doesn't take you five steps to move. It's not hopscotch. You do know that your walk with God is not hopscotch. You know that you have purposes and destiny in life. And God does not put you in step number five to bring you back to step number one. God does, I don't care who told you that stuff. That is not true. That is not true. Now, you might get to five and come back to one, but God didn't make you go back there. You went back there because your mindset was, well, I guess I've got to be punished. I guess that, well, because we quote, well, you know, God punishes those he loves. <laughs> God punishes those he loves. Uh, yes, he does. But it's generally you punish you. You punish you. You live in the mess that you have because that's the mess you have already predetermined. Well, you know, my, my, my grandparents and my parents... You know, uh, they, 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 they grew up in this section of town, and, and, and they didn't have any money, and they didn't have any education. Yeah, you won't either. You won't either. And so you're going to go through life thinking this is how God does. And so your mindset is you're never going to receive everything that God has for you, even though he already has prepared it for you. You do know that a gift is not a gift until you take it and put it in your pocket, right? right. So God can give you a gift that he's already given to you that you can go through life and never possess because you never reached out and took it. And you never reached out and took it because you have a preconceived idea of how God wants you to be. Huh. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. And we're going to end right there. So, you know, but before we go, I want to say this. So all those folks who are watching on live stream, you know, you might not be here, but you can deal with that mindset. God has the capability of doing above and beyond anything that you could ever imagine. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what's happening in your life, God has purposes and destinies for you. But you have to first accept his son. Believe in your heart, confess your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. After that, deal with the mindset that limits God's ability. 
and you'll see him do above and beyond and miraculous things in your life. God bless you. I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you because you should never, listen to me, I'm going to tell you, you should never, if you will follow what I am telling you, that if you refuse to be conformed and you renew your mind, according to Romans, it says, if I will do that, then I will know the will of God in my life. But I have to remove the preconceived ideas of who I think he really is. Uh, so we, we have this idea that God is out there to get us and man, I'm going to tell you what, he's out there to knock us down and to step on us and you know, he's a, he's a righteous and holy God and so we're unholy people. I got some news for you. My Bible tells me that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am not an unrighteous individual. If you've been saved and the blood has been applied to your life, you are not unrighteous. You are the righteousness of Christ. Are you hearing me? And so because you are those things, you have access to all things. Are you hearing me? Access to healing. Access to authority. Access to promotion. You don't even have to fight the devil. You don't, can you don't, if you understand who you are in Christ, you know why most of y'all are still facing the same mountains you faced 20 years ago? I've been telling that mountain to be removed. Yeah, you have with an unrenewed mind. Mm. The mountain already knows that you don't believe it's going anywhere. Because you know the mountain is not a real mountain, right? Y'all understand that we're talking about something that the enemy erects to block your path. Okay? But if you have a renewed mind, Guess what? You don't really have to speak to it. Just walk up to it and keep walking. Don't give it no attention. Why? My God can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. I don't have to look at my problem. I don't have to worry about my problem. It's going to come. That's okay. I'm just going to let it roll off my back. I know it's here to promote me. I know it's not here to keep me back. Because my mind says that everything that comes into my life is here to promote me and to perfect me. And so I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care how devastating it might seem like. I know that God is allowed it here to perfect me in some way. And so rather than resist perfection, I'm going to accept perfection. I'm going to renew my mind. And I know it's difficult because some Sometimes it's hard to deal with the crap that comes in your life. And I said the word. Why? Because when it comes to us, we get knocked off balance. And we wonder, how could God let that happen? But rather than say, I know that he's using it for promotion. And so I resist God when he's in. Are y'all in here? If you're a believer, God's involved in everything in your life. You're resisting what he's trying to perfect. Because your mind says that God don't do it like that. Really? Really? You don't know what I'm going through. But I do know that God sent it or he's orchestrated it. Why do I know that? Because every word in that book is true. And the Bible says, well, last beyond time. And so if it's true and it is timeless. Then everything that comes, I might not like it. It might come in the, in the form of a child that they say can't make it. But you get a choice to choose. You get a choice to choose. This child's born and we said, no, we're not accepting that. Because our mind says this. Our mind says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can lay my hands on that child. And I believe that God can heal that child. And I don't walk away thinking it might happen and it might not happen. I walk away with my mind renewed. No, he is Jehovah Nissi and Jehovah Rapha. And he can supply and he can heal. And he can make, he makes a brand new mind where the doctor found the problem. You don't believe that? There's a miracle right there. There's a miracle right there. Never going to mature. Sits up, crawls, before his time. Yeah. Yeah. Astonishes the doctors. 
And science so is the people who are doing therapy. I can't believe it. No, you can't believe it because you have a restricted mind. Come on. But we look at it and celebrate it because we have a renewed mind. Okay. I got to stop. I, gotta stop. I hope you're getting something. You know, I, I want you to live bold. I want you to live full. I want you to live victorious. I'm not telling you you're not going to have problems, but can I tell you that if it comes into your life, it stays a lot less time if your mind is renewed. The problems that are prolonged in your life is because you didn't learn from it the first time. So I've been here before. Yeah, you're going to be here again. <laughs> That's not how God works. Really? Really? I've been in the ministry since I was 16 years old. I've been in some stuff eight or nine times. Why? I didn't learn the other seven. <laughs> I didn't learn. So God said, okay, you, you, you passed math, but you didn't pass that. Okay, now, you're already in line for a promotion, but I can't promote you because in that situation that you refused to accept and learn from was a character of me that would get you to a higher level. But I can't get you there because you didn't let it develop on the inside of you. If I promote you prematurely, you're going to call, fall and call somebody else to fall. Oh. Mm. So you got to go. Children of Israel, you're leaving Egypt. The promised land you don't even need to eat it's that close. But guess what? You're going to go for 40 years and all the old generations die. Because you have a mindset. If you had it renewed, we'd cross over and be there tomorrow. But since you don't, and when you went around the first time, you showed me you hadn't learned nothing. Y'all didn't even get in the desert till you wanted to go back. So i got to let you keep going until you learn. And guess what? Unfortunately, there are generations that don't learn. Y'all need to hear this right here. And they try to impede younger generations. You better change your mindset of a generation that's uh, tattooed. And you better change your mindset about how you look at some of these young people who really love God. Because God might take you out because you have become a hindrance to. That was free. Yeah. All right. Stand your feet. We got to go. Come next week. Bring somebody. Can I tell you before we are done, I'm going to get on the front door of your house. And I'm going to knock on the door. And if you don't answer, I'm going to knock on the windows. <laughs> I, I, before we're done, I'm going to get up close and personal with stuff that you are dealing with that you don't think that I I'm not going to, unless God tells me I'm not going to confront you personally. But I am going to teach you some things that God is showing me that are personal things. There are personal things in our life that are hindering us from knowing the will of God but it's because we don't renew our minds in certain areas. And you do know you can hold on to something. You can hold on to a wound or a hurt because it has become so, so, so much a part of your life that you don't know what you would do without it. Mm. Wow. Some of y'all in this room are carrying wounds that you won't let go of because they have become your life partner. I don't know how I would do if I just didn't feel this way. You know, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't sick all the time. Pain has become my closest friend. Really, pain lets me know that I'm alive. You have found a mindset to substantiate why the enemy is still there. And before this series is over, we're going to deal on those personal levels, and I'm going to do all I can do to teach you how to be free. Because Jesus said, I came to give you a life and a more abundant life. Why are we not living that life? Abundant.
that means I'm not doing without? How come you got two pieces of bread and some peanut butter? Now, I'm not saying that you should not you that you should despise a day as a small beginning, but if you began 20 years ago and you still eat peanut butter and bread, then my question is, where is that life in your life? Why are you bound? Your bondage has become your partner. You can't be free because you won't let it go. And I'm not going to minister today, but I can tell you, I can see some faces in this room that the things that are in your life have become your partner for life. And it will not allow you to get to another level in your relationship with God because you think this is, I'm going to say it here, this right here, this is my cross to bear. Everybody, I've heard, this is my cross. Everybody has a cross. No, they don't. No, they don't. There was only one cross. That's right. And he didn't, and he didn't bear it forever. So it's not your cross to bear, but that's what your mind tells you. So you're okay with it. So you're never free. We've been to 15 healing lines that are still sick. You can go to 15 more until you renew your mind to find out what God's will for your life is. Father, we thank you that your love for us is way beyond our imagination. We can't even begin to imagine how much you love us. We can't even begin to imagine the reality of who you really are. Oh, we see you in the scriptures and we see you little glimmers of healings and we see all those things, and you know, but you are the resurrector of dead. Healing is just, oh, so simple. But when you came back from the dead, it gave us a different understanding of your character. So there's not even death can hold you. Help us to understand and to change our minds and to renew our minds that you know, every day, I should get up every day going, you know what, I, the thing I learned from yesterday is I don't know anything. I don't even have a clue how God's going to do it today. Help us to get to that juncture because there's such, there's such assets of your character that you want to show us and show the world through us that is so limited by our already preconceived ideas of how you're going to react or what you're going to do in situations. Open our mind to the impossible. Because you don't operate in the probable. You operate in the impossible. That's who you are. We sang it today. That's who you are. Help us as we leave this place. Today to begin to challenge ourselves on what it is that is restricting us and holding us and binding us. Help us to look at you, Father, and open our minds to everything that you really, really are and begin to tear down the strongholds and the mindsets and the preconceived ideas and just understand that everything that is based on and fulfills Scripture is you. We might not like it, we might not approve of it. It might not be tasteful to me. But if it's on the scripture, back up to scripture, fulfills the scripture, it's you. Help me to see you for who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Open your minds. God will never do anything that adds to or takes away scripture. But if it's based on and is fulfilled, it's him. You might not like it. You might not recognize it. But you might want to open your mind to the fact that he's more than you think he is. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next week.